Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to look at verses 1 through 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. The title of the message is Remember the Lost Souls. Remember the Lost Souls. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. The Bible says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Amen. Amen. Remember the lost souls. There are many current events that's going on in the world, and many of the events are all negative, all bad stuff going on, tragedies happening. And it happened in Korea. If you haven't heard already, in Seoul, there was a Halloween party going on in the area called Itaewon, and a lot of internationals live around the area. And what happened was that they were having a Halloween party, and there were 100,000 people crammed into a small area. It was first huge party gathering after you know, they loosened the restriction on pandemic. Korea is still one of the countries that require people to wear masks, but now, you know, they don't have to. And in that cramped space, what happened was that as people were trying to exit out of the area, people started falling. The, there was like a hill that was becoming downside, so downhill, and People in the front were being pushed by tens of thousands of people in the back. And as you know, when the force pushes you, and if you're not the strong ones, especially if you're woman and weak, they all fail. And it had a domino effect. If you have 100,000 people in a very cramped space, and I don't think it's anything bigger than from that exit site to where I'm standing. So from here to there, and you have 100,000 people, and they're all pushing against each other. And I'm being very conservative. It's probably smaller than from here to there. And then once someone falls, group, group of people falls, everybody starts falling on top of each other. So what happened? It's 154 people died. And they die because of suffocation. They couldn't breathe anymore. There were layers and layers of people. And the majority of the people who were on the bottom were women in their 20s. 
like men who fell, they were strong enough to dig themselves out of it, a lot of them. But young women, especially in their 20s, they couldn't defeat the force of the gravity on top of them. And out of those 154, can you believe it? There were 14 other nationalities than Koreans. So that's actually a real international event. 15 nations were affected and still counting. Can you imagine you're going to a party, you tell your parents, OK, I'm going to a Halloween party, and I'll be back later in the evening. Because this happened at 10, 15 PM. That's when they got the call. So it wasn't like really late, late in the evening. And you find out that your kid is dead. The images show people were just, every image was like people were doing CPR on somebody because they couldn't breathe and they died suffocating. I mean, Bible certainly says, for what is your life, it is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. I mean, can you believe it? 10, 15, you fall. Within minutes, you're gone. And I could tell you cert uncertainty because of how Korea is. Many of them weren't saved. Those lost souls. We're not here to you know, put them down, being in a places like that. What we're concerned is about their souls. Those souls who die without Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior are burning in hell right now, just like that. And it's not only happening in Korea. And back in October, I mean, we're still in October. In Indonesia, there was a soccer match. You know, soccer match, soccer's really big. And especially outside of the United States, soccer is number one. They call it their football, real football. We could always argue about that. They had a stampede, and over 125 people died. People were trying to exit, but if someone falls, there's always domino effect. You get trampled upon or layers of people on top of you, and you just can't breathe, and you just die like that. I mean, some of you guys love sports. You went to a sports, sporting event. You don't expect to die at the sporting event. You don't expect to be trampled over. You don't expect to not breathe. You don't expect to try to dig yourself out of layers of dead bodies on top of you. No, you just go there to enjoy yourself and you think you'll face another day. As I mentioned, out of 154 who died, 103 were people in their 20s. Who's in the 20s here? Some of you. You think you're the kings of the world, queens of the world. You mean you have the best physical condition you believe you're in. You think you can do everything. You think you're going to live a long, 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 long time. But what do you know? These 403 people in their 20s in Korea, their life's gone. Literally, just like that. And as Christians, you and I have to think about it. As you hear this type of news and events, what do you think about lost souls out there? I mean, it's a common question. Do you love the lost souls out there? Do you love the souls in general? I mean, they're on their way to hell. When do you think about lost souls? Do you only think about it when one of your personally attached loved ones pass away? Or do you think about it all the time? Christ came to the world to save sinners. Not just you, not just me, but everybody. Then we which are saved by grace of God, shouldn't we think about lost souls all the time? Amen. When these events do happen, it makes me think more and more. It makes me feel ashamed. Like, man, 
what have I been concentrating in my life? I mean, am I being concentrating about my own good, my family's good? Am I concentrating about, you know, my job, my status, you know, everything else in between, my health, you know? Don't get me wrong, you do lead, need to live a healthy life, but it shouldn't be everything that's consuming your life because we do have people who take 20, 30 supplements because, you know, they think that <laughs> their body needs it. I mean, people in the 1800s, when they didn't have supplements, they lived pretty well, too. Yeah. Even like 20 years ago, people lived pretty well. They didn't have to have, you know, whole cabinet of, you know, vitamins from A to Z and in between, everything. You know, certain ones, you know, I recommend you taking it, but you don't have to be consumed by it. Then, when you look at your life, because you're so polluted with the things of the world, you don't remember the lost souls out there. You don't remember all these souls on their way to hell. When you're dealing with people, you don't think of them as a soul that's on their way to hell. Come on, that's good. So when those things happen, it just tells me one thing. My relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, something's off. There's a gap. Yes. How do you measure? How do you measure that? You're living joyfully in the will of God, and you know that you're doing right spiritually. Do you have joy in serving the Lord on a daily basis? Do you love to read the Word of God? Do you love to share the gospel? Do you love to pray? And it just brings you joy and joy. Your life is full of that joy in serving the Lord. If you're not at that point, then Christian, you're backslidden. Simple as that. And when you're at that point, when you're in that state, you don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell anybody around you. You don't care about lost souls out there. You can't. How can you say, I love lost souls, but when you don't have joy in serving the Lord? How can you say, I don't want that soul to burn in hell, but your actions don't show it? It goes hand in hand. Yes. When you come to church, you bring your Bible. When you go home, you drop it somewhere and you don't know where it is until Sunday comes many times. Right? Because, yes. because you know, average American Christian nowadays, they only bring and they use Bible church days. Take it home, they put it somewhere, and they ask their wife or husband, hey, do you know where my Bible is? Well, that's a common question. I mean, it's, it's laughable matter, but it is serious matter. Yeah. Because in order for you to remember the lost souls, one of the things that you have to do constantly is you have to be cleansed. You have to wash yourself. Yes. And how do you wash yourself? Through the Word of God. You have to wash yourself through the Word of God constantly. You listen to the Word, preaching, Bible study on Sunday, Wednesday, you know, in between if you guys have a chance to listen to other, you know, materials. But what about all those free time, right? Tomorrow's Monday, Halloween. What's on your head? Candy? Walking around the neighborhood to get some candy? Or trying to lock your door and turn the lights up so that someone knocks, you know, you will not answer, or they will just skip you over? Or are you talking about lost souls out there? Yes. There's gotta be hundreds and thousands of people. Yes. If they haven't done it on the past weekend, they're gonna do it tomorrow. Right. They have souls out there. Obviously, you know, Brother Caleb, to post that our you know Halloween video, yeah. listen yes. to it. Right, it's less than ten minutes. Imagine. Gives you the outline and history of Halloween. We know it's wicked. We know it's devilish, right? Yes. But if people knock on the door, what are you gonna do? Right. You use that opportunity to spread the gospel. Amen. Amen. Give him a track. If you have more time. Maybe you could talk about gospel for a few minutes, right? 
If you were thinking about lost souls, if you're remembering those lost souls out there, you are going to take every opportunity to talk to them about Lord Jesus Christ. Simple as that. Because you love their souls. But that's missing. You're missing that first love. You're missing that first love in your life. When Christ saved you, remember the day when you got saved. I mean, we hear it and we talk about it all the time. Remember the day you got saved. How happy were you? How joyful were you? Did you stay where you were? No, you didn't. You wanted your immediate family. You wanted your loved ones to hear as well because you wanted them to get saved. Because you knew the value of soul is eternal value. One soul is in heaven. They're in heaven forever. One soul's in hell. They're in hell forever. I mean, there's no if and buts. There's no in-between ground like purgatory or all those, you know, paradise or blah, blahs out there. According to the word of God, it's either heaven or hell. Yes. And when you go back to first time you got saved, I mean, I do remember. I hope you guys remember if you're saved. Man, you had such a joy. And then you had such a burden. And I, I need, I really want others to get saved, especially my loved ones. That's why in order to remember the lost souls, first thing is you have to have burden. You have to have burden for the lost souls. It's not like, how should I say, nice to have. It's must have. It's not something it's good to have. It's must have. It's not something you'd like to have. It's must have. You must have burden for the lost souls out there. How often do days go by where you had no burden for lost souls? You didn't care about lost souls. You look at them, you deal with them, and some of them you're never going to see them again. But you had no burden. There's no prick in your heart. I mean, the Holy Spirit is, you know, you know, convicting you. Hey, talk to them about Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, talk to them about the gospel. At least give them a track. You have many, many tracks. And church provides many, many tracks in different languages and different, you know, categories, stories. But you're like, not today. I'm like, not today. I'm too tired today. I'm too busy today. You know? No, I don't want to do it today. I mean, there's an example. I, mean, I kind of realized it. So if you were to give someone something and they reject it all the time, and you feel like, okay, they don't want it. Now, that's like a normal day life. For example, I have a gum, and then I try to give gum to my wife. And she rejected me 10 times, right? I don't need gum, okay? And then when you're eating your gum, you don't think about giving to her again, right? But she goes, hey, where's my gum? Right? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's what happens. So we become creature of habit. But as a soul winner, as someone who remembers lost souls, your behavior shouldn't be like that. Even if they say no after no after no after no, you still do it. Amen. Why? Because you have burden. Right? If I thought that my wife chewing that gum is the most important thing, she rejects it again, I'll offer it all the time. Hey, it's good for you. It's good for you. Right? Right. When it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's the best thing anybody could ever receive. Amen. That track can make a difference for eternity. You have loved ones out there, they rejected you 100 times, you got to try 100 times more. Right? Out of that 100 times, you try it again, and that one time they receive it, then they can get saved. That's why you have to have a burden for lost souls out there. You have to feel like, okay, it's life or death. They don't receive it, they don't accept it, they're going to die and burn in hell. 
I do not want that to happen. Because God's will is what? According to 1 Timothy 2, 4, who will have all men to be saved and come to and come to the come unto the knowledge of the truth. It's God's will that everybody gets saved. And then you're his tool. You're his child. God can use you, and God wants to use you. And God never forces anybody. So it's up to you. It's up to your tiny heart to make that decision. Why did I use tiny? Because we are tiny Amen. in the sight of Almighty God. Yes. Don't think that you're big. I'm not. You know, I remember those days when I first got saved. I was leading many, many souls to the Lord. You know, and then you get haughty, human nature. It's like every person I talk to is receiving Christ. Give glory to God, but you know, when if you're not careful, you you're gonna you're gonna be puffed up. Yes. So pride got into me, and then for a while, no souls were getting saved, and I had to check myself. What's happening, right? Am I doing this because I have burden for the lost souls, or because am I doing this because I want credit? I want people to see. I want pastors to announce that, hey, you know, that brother led this many souls to the Lord. So you have to have a balance. You're not doing it to give credit to yourself. You're doing it because you love that soul. Amen. Because the Lord loves that soul. Yeah. Because the Lord wants them to get saved. Amen. Then as you look at your current Christian life, do you have burden for the lost souls? When you hear these tragic stories, does your heart break? I mean, it broke my heart. I mean, think about it. These are people in their 20s, many of them. I mean, they might have rejected the Lord, but some of them might have, I guarantee, some of them probably never heard the gospel like they should. Or someone, some of them probably never actually were told by one of you and me, Bible-believing Christians, about salvation plan. Obviously, no one will have ever excuse at the white throne judgment when it comes to excuse of not getting saved. But however, you and I could do a little bit more yes. to reach out to them. If we were there, what's the first thing are you going to do? If you see all these young people taking their last breath, right? Obviously, you want to revive them, save them, you know, bring them to life. But if they're going to die inevitably, what's the first thing comes onto your head? You want them to get saved, don't you? Yes. That kind of burden should be in your heart every single day. That kind of burden for law should be in your heart every moment. So that you won't let anyone pass by you without you being able to say, I've done my best to witness to that lost soul. Because I love him. Not because, you know, out of duty I'm doing it. Because I just love those lost souls out there. I remember those lost souls. Because I was a lost soul. Amen. If someone did not have a burden for my lost soul, then I wouldn't be here. Right. Then... If you receive such a great gift of salvation because someone had burden for your lost soul, don't you think you should be out there having that loss? I mean, burden for those lost souls out there. Yes. Christians should be ashamed yes. if, you, if your heart does not move when you see so many lost souls dying without Christ and going to hell. Ukraine war, right? Many are dying without Christ. Africa, many are dying without Christ. Asia, America, everywhere in the world, many are dying without Christ. How do you feel about it? Are they just another human being to you? Are they just another statistic to you? Or do you really clamor for their souls to get saved? And each soul that rejects Jesus Christ, do you feel heartbroken? What do you think the Lord was going through when people were rejecting him and rejecting him? You and I, 
we'll probably get angry. Yeah. Right? Okay, man. I have the power to just send you to hell. <laughs> I have power to just, you know, kill you right now or just destroy you, make you become a dust, you know, just disappear once and for all. No, he had compassion for the lost souls. Amen. Even though they rejected him, even though they spat on his face, even though they crucified him, he still had compassion for those lost souls out there. When people hate you, when people curse at you, cuss at you, when people persecute you, where are you? Do you hate them? Like, hey, I'm glad you're going to burn in hell for rejecting gospel and getting mad at me. No. You should have the attitude and you should have the love for those souls. Man, they're blinded by the devil, like the Bible verses that we read. They need to see the light. And if you do have burden, you're going to try it over and over and over. You're not going to let this one incident, two incident, five incidents stop you from witnessing to them. That's right. Stop you from telling them about Jesus Christ. Stop you from telling them how to go to heaven. Stop you from telling them about there's a place called hell. And I don't want you to burn there no matter what. How can you have that? When you have burden for lost souls. And this is something that you have to check on a daily basis. Right now, I feel like we have burden for souls because we're listening to preaching. Right. However, once you're outside of this church building, when you're at home, when you're at your everyday normal life, do you think you have the same zeal and love? No. You have to pray. You have to put it into action. Amen. I think that's the biggest pitfall that Bible-believing Christians have. You and I know too much, but we don't practice it. Amen. We just want our knowledge to puff up. That's why many of you online listeners, all you do is just listen and listen. Right. And you don't really put it into action. And not just online. I mean, I'm, I'm saying every congregation here yes. as well. You and I just listen. Our burden is to grow our knowledge, to show other people that I know more than you. Instead of going out there with this knowledge, using it for the lost souls out there. Because there are so many examples. I mean, those who went to PBI, right? The most dangerous time for a PBI attendee is the first year. After first year of study, you receive so much marvelous teaching from Dr. Ruckman. And you're like, you know everything now. I know more than Dr. Ruckman now. <laughs> so they become very haughty, full of pride. And that's when many of them don't continue and falls apart eventually. You and I have this great truth. It's almost like a college-level education, college-level of knowledge that God has given us in the last days Amen. using Dr. Ruckman. Yeah. Because before that, you know, there weren't commentaries like we have right now. Right, right. We don't have the sound doctrine and truth like we have right Amen. now. But, I, you know, we're in the last days God's showing us and giving us through Dr. Ruckman. Great. Great. Then... You should be thankful and have a humble heart. Yes, that's good. And how are you going to keep that humble heart? By having lo love for the lost souls. Amen. When you have burden for the lost souls, you're not out there trying to say, hey, do you know the difference between tribulation? Do you know the difference between, you know, Old Testament, New Testament, all this covenant? Do you know all these doctrines? You're not out there just to show up. You want to use that knowledge. So that if they have a question, you'll be able to answer them accordingly so that you could lead them to the Lord. Amen. That's why it is very important that you never lose sight of your heart and make sure that you have burden for lost souls. And secondly, if you want to remember the lost souls, you have to 
spread the gospel at any moment, yes. anytime, everywhere. Yes. You have to be having the, how should I say, heart and the behavioral habit and love for the lost souls where you don't care if it's two in the morning. You don't care if it's four in the morning. Yeah. You don't care if it's two in the afternoon when you need to sleep, take a nap. You're going to witness to a lost soul at every given opportunity. Amen. That shows that you're remembering those lost souls. When you do it at every opportunity, it shows that you do care about it. If someone loved you so much that they died for you, you probably want to tell someone about it all the time, right? If, if your daddy told you, hey, if you hear this sound, say hallelujah, right? Then you, you, if you love your daddy, you're gonna, if you hear this sound, you're going to be like, hallelujah, right? Hallelujah. If you love your mom, you say amen every time you hear a clap, and you're going to do it. And then it becomes such a part of your life, and you do it because you love your mom and your daddy. Yes. If you love lost souls out there, and if you love your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, if you love God, any season, any moment, any time, anywhere, you're going to witness. Amen. You're going to spread the gospel. Yes. You're going to talk about Lord Jesus Christ. That shows that you remember the lost souls. I mean, I could tell you when I remember something, that means that I'm thinking about it and doing it all the time. I mean, as I grow older, and everybody's growing older, Amen. man, you lose memory. Yes. I was thinking about something. I mean, I was pre preparing for a message, and I'm like typing, and I had this idea in my head. I'm typing, okay. But another idea came in. It's like, okay, I'm going to go back to that idea after I type this. That was only five seconds ago. Man, I can't go back. So I'm like praying to God, God, Lord, help me to remember, help me to remember. Yeah. And as I go, okay, Lord gives me grace to remember again. Amen. What does that tell you? You have to do it over and over and over and over. I mean, if you want to remember the lost souls, you have to witness to them over and over and over and over. It's not something you only do on a Friday. It's not something you only do when we go visitation. It's not something only you do when you have other members of church, when you're with other members of church, right? You have to do it every single time. If I'm alone, I still have to do it. Because who is in you? Greater than any being out there, Lord Jesus Christ, who can speak through you. Holy Ghost, right? Yes then what do you have to fear? At any moment, at any time, wherever you are, you've got to be preaching the gospel. Amen. Simple as that. Whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, whether you're a little child, yes. you have to do it. Preach in season, out of season. That's Bible. Yep. It's not when you feel like it. Amen. You do it any time. Dwight L. Moody Right, famous evangelist. Dwight L. Moody made a covenant with God that he would witness for Christ to at least one person each day. I mean, he led millions of people to the Lord. So his covenant to God, his promise to God was that, God, I'm going to witness for you at least to one person every day. So one night, about at 10 o'clock, uh-oh, he only got two hours left, he realized that he had not yet witnessed and you're thinking about a person who has so much stuff going on in his ministry. So you think, oh, yeah, maybe one day is okay, right, for such a busy man like that. No. So he went out into the street and spoke to a man standing by a lamppost. I mean, Lord gave him a person. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's, like, standing there <laughs> waiting for him to come up to him at a lamppost, right? I mean, you might get scared, right? Is it nighttime <laughs> and some guy standing there? So he went out to the street and spoke to a man standing by the lamppost and asking him, are you a Christian? The man flew into a violent rage and threatened to knock Moody out. 
Later, that same man went to an elder in the church and complained that Moody was doing more harm in Chicago than 10 men were doing good. The elder begged Moody to temper his zeal with knowledge. You always are going to have somebody, especially your close ones. Hey, 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 you know, stop, stop, stop. You don't have to do 24-7, right? Of course, you do it with balance. But, you know, you do it at every opportunity because the Lord will give you those opportunities. And there's always going to be the close ones in your life. In church, another brother or sister who's jealous and envious of you when you're doing the will of God, like, hey, slow down, slow down. It's okay. You already witnessed to many people. It's okay. You know, it's okay. And always remember that when things are going good or when you're doing the will of God, someone, especially close to you, will try to, you know, dampen that mood, try to make you feel bad, right? Forget them. If it's not in the will of God, just say blah, blah, blah. You know, talk to my hand, talk to the wall, because I don't care. Because I am most concerned about what my Lord thinks. That's it. You know. So three months later, mind you, so that was, he talked to that guy standing on the lamppost, and he's complaining to the elder, right? Three months later, Moody was awakened at the YMCA by a man knocking at the door. So someone's knocking now. It was the same man he had witnessed to three months ago. I want to talk to you about my soul. That's what he said. He apologized to Dwight L. Moody for the way he had treated Moody and said that he had no peace ever since that night on Lake Street when Moody witnessed to him. I mean, you do the sowing, God does the reaping. Yes. We do the, you know, we, we water the ground. God's going to harvest, do the, all the harvesting. Yes. Moody led the men to Christ, and he became a zealous worker in the Sunday school. Amen. Think about that. Just because Dwight L. Moody, first, of course, he had burden for the lost souls. And he did not stop when he was tired. He did not let the night, the morning, any time in between to preach the gospel. Because of him, that man came to the Lord and got saved. It took three months, but hey, three months goes by fast. Yes. Sometimes it takes years and years, 20, 30 years, yes. but you still do it right. because you have that burden and because you're going to do it at any time. You have to constantly, constantly spread the seed everywhere. Right? As Christians, you and I, we have to spread it. You know, plant the seed everywhere. Yes. Because God's going to eventually you know, harvest it in his time. So, hey, I'm at a fast food restaurant. I'm going to do it. I'm at a gathering. I'm going to do it. You know, I met somewhere else. I'm going to do it. You just can constantly do it. You know, sometimes just leaving that track, someone's going to pick it up. Right? I mean, we have people who come to our church who saw our track on a shopping cart, empty shopping cart. It was just up there. So they read it, got saved, and came to church. So word of God never comes back void. I mean, it's fruitful. It's God's word we're talking about. And in order to remember the souls, first, you have to have burden for the lost souls. Second, you ought to be preaching the gospel at any moment, any time, anywhere. And lastly, your life has to show it. Your life has to show that you remember those lost souls. How? By living like a Bible-believing Christian. Your testimony should show. Because... Your testimony is everything and only thing that lost world sees nowadays. You don't expect some John Doe out there take out their King James Bible, start reading, and then ask you a question. Hey, what does it mean to be saved? Nope. That's not going to happen hardly. They just see your life. And they see your pattern in your life. 
and they see the conversations that you're having. And they're going to be like, okay, he or she calls themselves Christian. Do I want to be like them or not? Do their lifestyle show that they love my soul? Because many people are being used by the devil to be a tool to send unsaved people to hell. And I'm not excluding any Christians. Many Christians, many so-called Bible-believing Christians, you are that source. You are that tool that devil uses to send others to hell. Think about that. Because of your conversation, because of how you behave, because of how you act in front of those lost souls, they're like, you know what? I don't want what he has. I don't want that light. I'm going to stay in darkness. I'm just, I'd rather not accept Christ. Because accepting Christ, if that's the result, if that person is the result of accepting Christ and being a Christian, forget it. I don't want to be like that. I'd rather enjoy my life right now here on earth. I'll enjoy, you know, my pleasures and then let it be. And they could always say, I don't want to be where he's at or she's at. If they're going to be in heaven, I'd rather not be in heaven. I mean, people think very, you know, radical, unrationally, right? But you are the source that's creating it. If all you ever did was talk about worldly stuff, fleshly stuff, how would they ever receive you trying to witness to them? They're like, you're a farce, right? Are you kidding me? You're joking about, you're having these dirty jokes. You're enjoying this worldly stuff. And you're drinking, smoking, doing drugs. And you're telling me to accept Christ? Why? I mean, that's not what I think about Christ. Because people do have a general idea of Christ being holy. I mean, great master. I mean, he's God himself. And you are supposed to be that light to the world, but they see it, and they're like, no way. That's why if you want to remember those lost souls, your life has to change. Your pattern has to change. You have to start living holy. You have to start living pure. You have to start living like what the Bible says. Simple as that. It's It's not a rocket science. You just go to the book and follow what the book says. Yes. Then these souls, lost souls out there, will see you. And if you've been worse and you had been backslidden and you kept a bad testimony, it's not too late. They see the difference. Like, hey, what's wrong with that guy? What's wrong with that girl? What's wrong with that boy? Something's changed. No more bad, bad words coming out of their mouth. They're dressed properly. They're talking properly. They're working hard. You know, because a lot of you know, people are lazy bums, Christians. Amen. Don't do anything at work and just try to just you know, wing it. But man, this guy's working hard. This woman's working hard. And man, they seem very, very clean then once you witness to them at that point, they have more of an open heart. And they will actually listen. And they will have better chance of getting saved at that moment because you, your testimony is working for the you know, right reasons instead of the wrong reasons. I'll finish with this. I mean, we have many, many great missionaries that we could you know, get inspiration from, learn from. And one of the best missionaries ever was Hudson Taylor. Hudson Taylor demonstrated all these three points. He had burden for the lost souls. I mean, he preached the gospel anytime, anywhere. And he showed it with his life. He was a white man going into Asian country, China. So what did he do? I mean, he, he shaved his head, grew his hair, just to show them I'm in business. 
I care for your souls. If this is what I have to do, and he did not compromise anything. It's not like he had to smoke or drink or do drugs. He just changed in a way so that they could see this guy mean business. This guy's life pattern, I could actually relate to. And they listened, and many, many souls got saved. People are looking at you right now. And you have people all around you, immediate family, outside, coworkers, you know, just strangers around your neighborhood, everywhere. They want to see. Is your lifestyle something that I want? Is that something that I don't want? Is Christ Jesus, Lord and Savior of you? Is he the Lord and Savior that I want in my life? And your life will show that. And if it does, Lord's going to open the door. Their heart will be open. And then you could share that first love with those lost souls out there. Wouldn't you want someone to come up to you in heaven and say, man, you remember the lost souls. You remember my soul. Thank you for helping me get saved. Instead of at the white throne judgment, someone's accusing you and pointing at you. You're the reason I'm on my way to hell. It's up to you. Because you'll be hearing both sides of story at the judgment. Let's pray.